Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about Transite Asbestos Gas Vents. So as a home inspector, there's two places where I typically come across Transite Asbestos. One of them is going to be sub-slab ductwork. It's these big white tubes that go underneath homes to distribute warm air. It's sub-slab ductwork. We'll run across those periodically. It's pretty uncommon though. A lot of the sub-slab ductwork made out of plastic got the unfortunate name of transite heat. Now, transite only refers to the asbestos-containing product. And that's not even what I'm talking about today. Today, my focus is on vents. Yeah, there was a period of time where they made this transite asbestos vent and they would use that to get the exhaust gases for a furnace or a water heater up and out of the house or maybe sometimes a boiler it could really be any gas appliance but furnaces and water heaters are the two big ones that we would always see so they use transite asbestos it's this white fibrous looking material kind of a cementitious product yeah that's a word and <laughs> it had really good insulating properties. Asbestos is a good insulator. So they'd use this stuff for a vent, it'd go right up through the middle of the house and take the exhaust gases up and out, and it all worked well and good and it was perfectly fine until the stuff got wet. And once it got wet, either because you had condensation inside the flue, because it didn't, get hot, it didn't stay hot enough, or because you didn't have a good cover on the top, and rainwater would get into it. Either one of these causes, whatever it is, it would make the flue get wet and then it would act kind of like a pastry where the inside of it would start collapsing in on itself and you'd have these layers, these really thin, paper thin layers and they would collapse down and eventually they could block the flue. That's the big concern with these things, and I, I think that's why they stopped using them. I've, I've probably seen them used for about a 10-year period, maybe sometime, maybe late 40s up through mid 50s, somewhere in that range. Uh, they, they weren't used for a long period of time, but there, there are a handful of houses throughout the Twin Cities who have these. And anytime we, we run across them, we do our best to look inside that flue. Sometimes it might be trying to maybe, maybe well, I'm not gonna say we dismantle anything. Maybe we'd look down it, but we'll do whatever we can to look inside the flue to make sure that the interior is in pristine condition. If it's anything less than pristine condition, we call for repairs. We, we say that something needs to be done about it. Let's walk through an example so you can understand what I mean. This is a house in Columbia Heights that I inspected. It was built in 1955. And as you can see, the chimney looks like it's in pretty bad shape. That, that really has nothing to do with the transite flue, but it did kind of draw my attention to the chimney. And then looking down on the roof, I saw this white thing sitting there. As it turns out, that's the extension for the transite flue. It's stuck up out above the chimney and they were venting the water heater into this. So, hey, what the heck, why is it falling apart? I'd better look down this flue. Now I couldn't actually see down the chimney, it was too high, so I brought another ladder onto the roof with me, set that up against the chimney, and then got up there and looked down it. And as you can see, it's falling apart. The inside of this flue is collapsing in on itself. If we zoom in a little bit more, we look down at the bottom, you can see there's a big pile of the inside of the flue that has fallen apart and piled up there. So then of course, when I go back inside, and I test the draft on the water heater, it backdrafted like crazy. It means all of the exhaust gases were spilling back into the home rather than going up the flue. And it's all because the vent was falling apart and it was blocked. So this is a serious safety hazard. There's two potential fixes for this. One of them is to remove the existing flue, and I mean probably get an asbestos abatement contractor in there to remove the whole thing, you're gonna to have to go through finished spaces, or well, in this case, it went, went through a chimney. It might not be that big of a deal, but you gotta remove it and then install a metal liner. Now, if this were 
a vent that just went up through the middle of the house, it'd be a ton more work. So you could entirely replace the flue, it's a lot of money, a lot of work, and then you could leave the existing water heater there. What would probably be more cost effective, and it'd be, a, well, it'd be more cost effective, would be to replace the appliance instead. You abandon the flue, you just leave the flue exactly where it is, and you install a new water heater that either has a power vent exhaust where it vents out the side of the house directly, typically with PVC, or you'd install an electric water heater that doesn't need a vent. Either one of those is probably going to be more cost effective than dealing with the existing vent. Now if you do that, you would just abandon the existing vent in place. It doesn't pose any kind of hazard. I mean, you can find asbestos in a gazillion products within a house. I've, I've talked about this on my video channel here in the past, saying that if a material is not made out of wood or metal, it may contain asbestos. There's a lot of asbestos products you can find in a home. It doesn't mean that they're all hazardous and they all need to be addressed. It, you can just leave it the way it is. The big, the big important thing is don't do anything to it. Don't take an angle grinder to it. Don't try to sand it down because you're going to release asbestos fibers in the air. But if you just leave it where it is, it's not going to cause anybody any harm. So that would be our advice. Bottom line is, as a home inspector, when I come across any transite asbestos flues being used to vent gas appliances up and out of the house, I pay very close attention to them. If they're all pristine and they look completely perfect, I tell my client that when you replace the appliance that's going into this, you may have to address it. Your, your heating contractor may not want to reuse this. They probably won't want to reuse it. And you'll probably have to do something different. If I come across one of these and it's not in pristine condition, if it doesn't look all pretty and perfect and new, then I call for repair and I say either abandon it in place and use something that doesn't rely on this to get the exhaust gases up and out or replace the vent entirely. One of those two things. So that's it on Transite Asbestos Gas Vents. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.